and welcome to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. In today's COVID-19 era, health officials are urging lovers to keep masks on, embrace monogamy, stop kissing, and start improvising on everything from dating and courtship to sexual activity. Are we listening? Should we listen? How has this affected our ability to connect with each other in meaningful ways and to find love? Tonight's show will delve into how to navigate sex, dating, and relationships during COVID-19. And we've got an amazing panel of guests to help you along on this journey. First, I am so delighted to welcome Ottawa's own Sue McGarvey. Sue has been a clinical sex and relationship therapist since 1993 with a background in reproductive medicine. She has been described as a mix of Dr. Phil and Mae West, and she's one of the most well-respected therapists in the country. She's also the founder of the Ottawa Sex Therapy and Libido Clinic. She's a leading expert on libido and alternative sexuality and is also the author of a couple of books on intimacy. She's also known to run with scissors and color outside the lines. For over 10 years, Sue has hosted a number one rated syndicated talk show called Sex with Sue. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Barbara. Next, I'm delighted to introduce Jill Carter. Jill has been a well-respected matchmaker and coach for the past 13 years. She's known for her unique style of straightforwardness, humor, kindness, and empathy, and she's changed her clients' lives in profound ways. Jill has appeared on a national TV reality show, recruited potential contestants for another national dating show, and is currently developing a series of informational videos on self-awareness and connected relationships. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Jill. Thanks, Barbara, for having me. Now, Jill, you're giving something away for tonight's viewers. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd, um, it, lots of people are at home and wondering, you know, about um, where they're at in their lives and especially their dating lives. And a lot of people reach out to me for coaching. So I'm going to be giving away a 45 minute coaching call to one of the viewers. So viewers can connect with you directly through your website or your social media handles for a chance to win that. And thank you very much for that, Jill, because many people out there, especially these days, could benefit from your insight in this area. So yeah, the, first question, the first question I wanted to ask you both, is it a myth that you can't meet people or start a meaningful relationship during COVID-19? Because I'm certainly hearing that a lot. Let's start with you, Sue. Well, I've certainly seen some relationships start during COVID-19. I've seen a lot of them as a, as a relationship therapist. I've seen a lot of them break down and people are going, ah, it's never going to happen. And I've got to wait a year and, and it's going to, the sky is falling. And I don't believe that. I think what's interesting is it's the throwback to the 1950s. You are having to go back to dating via friends um sort of small intimate conversations and you're going to have to be a lot more patient than the immediacy hookup culture that was tinder bumble up until you know last march when it started so it sounds like it could be a lot healthier um so are people staying off the apps then i think that people are i think i'm not seeing you know, everybody's concerned right so being cautious is now considered a sexy trait you know to be able to see what's in your bubble in those kind of conversations i do think that there are some really interesting ways to connect right now and it's not as i said it's it's not business as usual and i'm sure jill will have something to say about that but it's not i'm not seeing the same stuff that i was where people are, are looking at you know how many people they can hook up with or whether or not that the grass is always greener and that the, the problem with so many options is you have so many options. It's like ice cream flavors. You just, you don't have to wait. And now you do. Now you have to be much more, much more careful, much more immediate and much more mindful of how you're going to date. But I think it's an interesting idea right now. And I think that the, the world is wide open on that. And Jill, I imagine that a lot of people who come to see you, uh, seek out the services of matchmaker because they've become disillusioned with the dating apps. I'm curious to hear your insights on how uh, your business has changed and if you're seeing any new trends um, emerge on the dating scene uh, out there in Vancouver. Um, absolutely. And I agree with what uh, Sue is saying. Um, a lot of people are coming to me because they don't want to be online. Um, and because 
it's it's frankly um, it's it's can be hazardous to your health these days, and people need to to. It, I encourage people not to date multiple partners. So because of that, and a lot of people online um, date multiple partners, they 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 come to me to streamline the dating um, their dating experience. So how has the way people date and interact with each other and express their sexuality? changed fundamentally since COVID-19. I mean, I'm thinking that, you know, in much the same way that going to the airport has never been the same after 9-11, I'm wondering if this is going to affect um, the way people interact and court each other moving forwards. What are your thoughts on that, Sue, and what have you been seeing in your office when you see uh, clients? Well, you know, the clients I've seen, you know, we, you know, we started, everybody was, you know, the panic and then, then you start seeing the virtual clients. And then I see clients from like, you know, they were sitting in their car cause they, you know, they want to talk about their relationships. They don't want to do it in front of their kids or their other relationships. Um, and to find that, that in intimacy, and it, it's very much like the STI kind of fear. For a long time, you didn't know how it was, and some people were much more prudent, some people were much more paranoid, and you see the whole gamut. Like, I've got a friend who hasn't been out of the house since March, and I also wow. know people who think it's, it's you know, I think we caught it in, in December when we were really sick. It was kind of like a bad flu, I don't care, and I'm going to the park, and I'm going to go to the, you know, to the beach and all of that. So everybody's on a, so it's, it's to me, it's an, another way of, of screening people because if, you know, depending on how you're feeling, and I think it's also causing people to be far more direct. You know, I, I like that about Jill's, you know, business is that she's saying, you know, this is what, this is who you are, this is what you're looking for. And I think that you feel like you don't have the time to waste and, and you want to, and you said you want to have the immediate, you don't want to have the immediacy, but when you do, you want to take your time to figure out this person is working for you. And that means lots of virtual dates, lots of long walks, lots of maybe we're holding pinkies after we've hand sanitized. I don't know, but there's, there's certainly some of that going. What there's about a, you, Jill? Lot. Sorry, go ahead, Barbara. Oh, I was just going to ask you, Jill, what, what has your experience been like? As far as my clients or just people in that, what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Both, both. Well, I, I mean, I think online dating is still happening. I know I have girlfriends who are online dating. I'm certainly different. I always encourage people to get offline. Um, if that's the route that they're taking, um, sooner than later, just because, you know, it, it's about being connected. And so I encourage that. That landscape obviously looks different. I have girlfriends who on the West Coast, we have the ocean, so they meet in a, in, they pull up in a parking lot in their car and they have a, they have a, a date in their, in their uh, respective vehicles. Um, I have people who sit on a park bench, you know, six feet away. I, but also too, I mean, people are wanting to get out and and socialize in restaurants, and restaurants out here are allowing that. So you can you can you can meet someone at the distance that is suggested and still have a nice time, right? I but I think you have to follow. You have to follow the guidelines, and I think most people are. Um, as far as intimacy, you know, if it gets to that point, you, you want to wait the 14 days, right? I mean, you want to make sure that everyone's healthy, and you want, again, be mindful and thoughtful of, of your partner and, and their family members. So in terms of the advice that you might give to a client on making a great first impression on a date, what would the advice have been prior to COVID-19 and how has that changed in terms of the perfect date or making a great first impression? I, I don't, I don't think it's changed that much. Um, I mean, smiling, number one, being <laughs> yeah. interested. In, so that hasn't changed. Um, I think, I think being interested versus interesting is always something I encourage. So being a good listener, asking 
um, questions, not personal questions, stay off of politics and exes, you know, your first couple of first couple of dates, but just be interested in in the person sitting across from you. And, and you so know, that, in terms that, of people, that, in terms of people who are embracing the virtual experience, because Zoom fatigue is a real thing and our attention spans are decreasing. Yeah. How do you suggest people navigate that? I'm, I'm interested to hear from you, Sue, in terms of your experience with this. I, I think you got to take a leap. I think if, if you're doing one person at a time, the way we're, you know, we said this is not, you're not going to do Tinder dates. And, and I know for a while when online dating came out, I was, I was suggesting to, to women, look, you do a half hour coffee date and you can have six in a week. And that would be your three hours of dating and you could move through a lot of people and in the course of seeing 50, one of them's going to click. I don't think you have that possibility. I think you can actually send interesting conversations with people. I, I, I do more. It's more about who you are rather than what you what you have or what you look like. And I'm sending questions like like ask them really interesting things like ask them what they're passionate about. Ask them what gets them out of bed in the morning. Ask them, you know, if they were an ice cream flavor, which one would they be? You know, things <laughs> that they talk about best Christmas present you ever got. Make them discuss who they are, because if they can't do it, this is the time to do this. We're all making this up as we go along. I don't know about everybody else, but I was a caged cat inside in March and April, just pacing because, yeah. you know, I'm like Vancouver, you know, it was, it was cold and yucky. And, and, the, and I thought the need to, for community, the need to connect with people and you need to do it safely and you need to do it, do it effectively. But, you know, I was just reading the article this morning, but the pumpkin patches are all open and I'm thinking, yeah, what a great date. Let's go pick, you know, what pumpkin do you want? You know, which, which kind which kind appeals to you and, and we're going to make that up as we go along. But I think that piece of getting out and actually having real, connected, authentic conversations with people is more relevant than ever. And I think, uh, I think that's what a lot of people are craving right now. And I've actually uh, looked at some recent research that looks at how even people's fantasies have changed to scenarios where there's an actual real connection, like a really meaningful relationship. And I find that really interesting. We're just about to go to break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about that, about how things have changed and, and also how the alternative and LGBTQ communities have been affected uh, by COVID as well. And of course, Jill, we'd love to hear your insights on the, the dating experience. So we'll be right back after the break. Don't go away. Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. On tonight's show, we're talking about navigating sex, dating, and relationships in the COVID-19 era with very special guests, uh, Jill and Sue, who are joining us tonight to share their insight with us. I came across some really interesting research from a sex and relationships researcher. She's Canadian, but she's also an associate professor and director of the Sexual Health Promotion Lab at the University of Kentucky. Uh, her name is Dr. Kristen Mark, and she's currently working on a study called Sex and Relationships in the Time of COVID-19. It's basically about dating during the, during the pandemic. And uh, she found some really interesting things. In their research, they asked about exes, and they found that one in five participants had reached out to their ex during the pandemic and one in four had heard from an ex. And while the most common reason for reaching out was to see if they were safe, but a lot of people did it because they were lonely or wanted to get back together or were just looking to hook up. Um, and they also found that one in five people noticed a change in the content of their sexual fantasies since the pandemic began. And so passion and romance fantasies and meaningful connections were the type of fantasy that increased the most, which of course, points to a heightened need for emotional connection and intimacy. And that ties into what you were saying uh, before we went to break, Sue, in terms of um, people's needs having changed. And maybe some of that is sort of forced by COVID-19 making everyone slow down as well. But have you come across those trends in, in, uh, in your practice as well? Absolutely. I think everything is amplified. If you're not feeling close to people, if you're not connected, if you're feeling like work was was doing that and you had all these busy activities, you were going places and you were on, you know, networking and all of that, it fills up your bucket. 
when you're not doing that, you're like, holy smokes. I, I know one woman who, you know, she got, she filled her bucket through work and all, again, all the, the different patio live music that she went to. And she said she has never been more clear that she needs a relationship because she's at home working from home by herself and said enough. And again, anything that's been you sort of in the back of your mind and saying amplified, I've, I've long believed that the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. And I'm sure Jill must see that. But it's the, the idea that you want connected, intimate, out of the park, authentic relationships. And this is the time when you're saying, I can't be alone anymore and fill it up with other things. Now, what about yeah, people no, from really Sorry, go ahead, Barb. What, what about people for whom casual sex is a coping mechanism or even a lifestyle? How are they dealing with that? Are they sort of forced to transition over to the new normal? I think there is a percentage that is still, you know, I'm hearing, you know, in Ottawa about some crazy sex stuff that's going on. Um, as it is, people think, you know, people in Ottawa don't have sex, but oh boy, do we ever, it's just much more discreet than the rest of the country. But the reality is, is you are, you know, those are the people that, the, you know, the premiers called what a, what a few French fries short of a Happy Meal was the phrase that Premier <laughs> Ford used, saying, you know, you guys are out there doing that. And there is a whole bunch of them that is, you know, sort of, I think is they're fanning the flames of the pandemic. And they are also really hooking up in terms of inconsequential sex. But that is not the most people. <laughs> most people who are single and, you know, the regional health department in Ottawa says it's 33%, right? So if you're an adult between 18 and 90, you know, a third of the population is single or qualifies themselves as single. And they may have friends with benefits or they may have a, you know, a workplace romance. But during this pandemic, and it's been nine months of amplifying what's going on, you know, it's, it's been six fully, but you have sort of nine of people going and we have a long way to go. And I think that people are going to want to look for what, what, what are their needs? And I, I tell people I'm in the needs business. If your needs aren't being met, what are you doing about it? And you need to do something like, like look for a matchmaker if, cause online things, I think, you know, will work if you find the people, but if you can't carry on a meaningful conversation and be able to have short video chats, you know, you don't want it to go on for five hours, but be able to have some mystery and some short connected, then I think you're going to be left out in the cold. Well, sure, because lust dies out after a time. Now, I know, Jill, you have some thoughts on the matter, and I'm also wondering, how are things like out in Vancouver? What's the scene out there? Um, we all heard about um, glory holes <laughs> out in BC. Is that actually happening? The glory holes? <laughs> what's, what's the scene in like out in Inconsequential sex, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, people aren't, they're not stopping being people. And, and I, I do find, a, like Sue was saying, that there's a certain segment of the population that, that are just not adhering to, to the rules, if you say, and, and, and being mindful of others. And you get that whether there's a pandemic or not. Um, I think, yeah, I just think people are doing a lot of self-reflection because they've been at home for months and months, especially early on. And I think if you're single, it was an opportunity, and it still is an opportunity for you to reevaluate where you're at, um, you know, emotionally, spiritually, all these things that that matter to people. They might not talk about them but it's sort of really amplified their their feelings of loneliness i know loneliness is is a key factor for people and and something that i've heard a lot just um talking to people so i just i you know when you're looking at changing from being single to not single is to or that's something you know a need that you that you want and like sue said we're in the need business um to visualize what that feels like for yourself with a partner. So is the feeling um, excited, nervous, you're fearful, and based on, on your feelings, it's a really good barometer as to where you're at um, personally, and let that be your starting point um, moving forward. Have you been surprised, Jill, by um, any changes in the demographics of your clients or in terms of what they're looking for? 
I mean, my clients run the gamut. So, I mean, it's, I've, I've had actually some younger clients, which usually, you know, in their 20s and 30s, which I, my client base is, is late 30s to 60s. So I have seen some some younger uh, people there because they don't want to be online. I think is the point. They don't want to be online. They want me to streamline their dating process. They know that they're qualified, at, and people have to sign a general release with me um, that they're healthy too. So that makes yeah. a difference. So healthy in terms of COVID, or also in terms of STDs, or both. Well, just in general, yeah. But I mean, it yeah. just covers the, you know, that they're healthy. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm fine. What I'm hearing is that asking people if they're COVID free has sort of become the new uh, STD <laughs> test or the new HIV test. It's, it's very interesting. Um, Sue, I'd like to ask you about um, alternative communities, people who practice swinging or polyamory or people who are non-monogamous who might be living with one partner but not with others how are these or how are these setting boundaries about how they spend time together and what's your advice to those communities and to your point that yes here in conservative ottawa that's actually a, a growing demographic and that does exist absolutely absolutely i i i see a lot of a lot of my clients are non-monogamous and and it's been again being interesting because because as, as a sex and relationship therapist I see people who want to talk about their wives, their mistresses, or wanting a wife and mistress or not getting enough sex. And, and you can't do that if your other partner's in the house. So it's been a really interesting time for me to do virtual calls where people are don't want to come in and see me, but are thinking, you know, do you want to do a walk in the park, Sue? Because I can't do this session, you know, in my house. So it's that part's interesting. And they really, it has been a really hard time if you're not living with your primary partner. And there's, you know, in, in, in polyamory, there's, you know, sometimes it's, 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 it's got a, a hierarchical, you have a, a primary partner and a secondary partner. And if you're, even if it's open, you're not able to see them because they're in different bubbles. And it's very, very hard if you're used to that, you know, because I see a lot of couples, I have, I've, you know, a number of people whose wives are ill or whose husbands are dying or who are traveling and they're getting their sexual needs met by other people, and even if it's transparent it's really difficult and that that certainly and all of these things apply if you know if you're gay bisexual trans whatever it it, it but if you are in a multi-family i keep thinking this is this is i, I want a commune as i age like this the, you know dying alone or aging alone is now my worst fear and i think yeah. that having community around has become my buzzword i am even more committed than ever about community because it's it's you know i don't know where this is going but it's 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 a once in a lifetime you know, event in terms of a global pandemic, and you really need to have people around you because we are herd animals. And there is, as Jill said, we are profoundly lonely, and there are a mm -hmm. lot of people falling through cracks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jill, do you have clients within the LGBTQ community, and are you hearing uh, trends or concerns expressed within that community that um, are, are of interest or that have surprised you? Yeah, no, surprisingly, I, I haven't. I don't have any uh, clients from that community, so, um, but I welcome, I, I welcome them. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, cuffing season? Is that a thing? And can you, maybe Sue, could you talk a little bit about what that is? It, it was either, cuffing season is, is the idea that you want to, you want to, you want to hibernate with somebody, right? As it got into cold weather, you're going to, you're going to sort of, hunker down with somebody and you, you end up saying, oh, well, this person may not be the person now, but you're going to pick them um, because you don't want to be single during mm -hmm. the cold winter nights, right? You want to be by a fire and you, even if they're, they're Mr. Right now, not Mr. Right. And that's happening, you know, because you're, you're seeing a lot of pandemic dating, right? Because if, if it's somebody you've met before, you know, they're, you know who they are. They're not somebody you would normally have a, a you know, a life with, or they're, there are a set of friend with benefits that you think, okay, I'm going to continue this. This is going to be the person in my bubble because I need touch and I need connection, but I'm going to only do it because we're having a COVID dating as opposed to a cuffing dating, which was always known as, you know, that time. And then you want to usually, usually you have, you start, you start dumping them before Valentine's day because it starts to mean more, right? That's been the sort of traditional cycle. 
and before spring hits and then you're out being the girl or guy about town. But right now you're saying, I don't want to be alone. I am going to pick Mr. Right or Miss Right now. And is cuffing season turning into COVID season, coving season, I guess you would call it? It really is, and they're they're finding all kinds of ways to uh, to to realize that your bubble is not, you know. And, and again, it, I, I saw a meme today that you think your bubble is this big, but the reality is it's this big. But the truth is, is you need you need to be with somebody and the thought of not having sex and because I'm a sex therapist and I talk to a lot yeah. of men about sex, the idea of being cut off for sex is for long terrible? periods of time is it's terrifying. We're just about to go to break, but I want to hear more about that. Plus, do's and don'ts of dating with Jill Carter when we come back after the break. Welcome back to Ottawa Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and on tonight's show, we're talking about sex, dating, and relationships, and how to navigate all those things during the COVID-19 era. We're joined by special guests, matchmaker Jill Carter and sex therapist Sue McGarvey. Sue, before we went to break, you were talking about how cuffing season has turned to coving season, and especially for people who um, may not have access to the physical and intimate aspect of their lives, how this is particularly terrible to be deprived of those very human needs absolutely and if you you know if you're feeling like you can't get touched and for a lot of people you know said sex is like i you know i tell everybody sex is a basic need it's the second most powerful drive after food and if you're not getting it it drives you it's what drives guys into bars and snowstorms and if you can't go there what do you do and if you're not literate or you're a new Canadian or you you don't have the ability to go online and as Jill said it there's a lot of really you know I, I've talked to one woman recently she called it a soul crushing experience being online and you're not in a situation you're trying to figure out where you're going and and you know matchmaking is a great idea it's been around you know since the dawn of time and it's, a, yeah. it's an age-old profession you know yeah. to try new models of where you know and I used to say go talk to people at Starbucks and you can't do that because people are like run away Jeremy person and you can't do any of those things anymore so how do you actually connect um you know I'm doing a zoom call tonight with you know and I had I had a, a zoom 101 group with my social group and we have to do everything virtually and I was expecting there to be 25 I had 50 you know just double yeah. the amount of people because they and they could and we just talked about what's quirky about you and and it was interesting because you have some crosstalk because you have all these little squares of heads and people talking about what's quirky because they're having to do that. I just saw an announcement that they were doing a walk and then ending up at the St. Albert Cheese Factory. I thought, okay, that's cool. You, you know, you, you're allowed to have 25 people and then 10 people at a time could go inside getting cheese curds. And, you know, you may not be able to get everybody has their own little bag of cheese curds. I thought, what a lovely way that's different than being online to actually connect. Well, I mean, what's amazing about it is that it's forcing us to be more creative and it, it can actually be a lot of fun. But this is a great segue to a question I have for you, Jill. So for people out there who are willing to take the plunge, who don't want to be alone, whether it's this winter or beyond, uh, let's go through some do's and don'ts that you have for clients who are willing to, to dip their toe into that pool. Uh, do, you, do you want me to talk about my clients or do you want to talk about online dating profiles? Because I think uh, the majority of people do that on online, but. Uh, well, uh, you had sent me some do's and don'ts, um, including things like be authentic and be positive in what you want right. and versus yeah. don't take so, yourself too seriously or don't share suggestive yeah. photos. Maybe we can talk about those. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, current photos. Um, so within a year. Right, because we've all heard the the horror stories where you know people think they're seeing someone and and someone else completely different shows up, and that's not fair and that's not respectful. So always use current photos. Um, show your personality definitely um, on whether it's on on your online profile or or in person. I think being authentic is is important um, for the other person to see who who they're getting to know um positive being positive is always negative malaise and 
who who wants to be around that? So no complaining. How do you, no how do you stay positive at a time like this? Because I find every conversation these days starts with, "How are you doing?" Like really, "How are you doing?" Right? Like how do you how do you stay positive in, within this context? Well, I think it's a mindset, and if we all tell ourselves, you know, this isn't forever, this too shall pass. Right? It's not going to be forever, and and as terrible as it is, and has been for some families. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity available for people um, during this time. You know, people are slowing down, they're working from home, they're not spending as much money going to work. I know um, my sister is saving hundreds of dollars not going to work um, every day. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of positive things to, to a pandemic as well. And being, being connected to people and having to reach out and having to make the the extra effort um, towards you know family and um, you know the opposite sex if if you're single so I think there's been a lot of opportunity for people these days when you're matching your clients are they getting on a Zoom call right away no no I I it's face to face mm -hmm. for me that's, that's my setup so it's it's whether it's on, you know, pick up a coffee, uh, meet in the park on a park bench. Sometimes he'll bring a bottle of wine. It's it's now allowed in some parks here in Vancouver. So, um, you know, just being create, just being creative. But uh, patios. I mean, since you know, it's been the summer, so it's been mostly on patios. And then mm -hmm. once people get to know, once people get to know each other and they're and they're seeing each other some more at each other's homes, you know, on, on, on their, uh, on their patios and, and, but mostly outdoors, it, it's been outdoors just to be safe. And when do you suggest it's okay to get to the next level in terms of physical or sexual activity? I suppose pre COVID and now during COVID has, has that changed in terms of the advice that you give? And do you give the same advice to women as you do to men? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think, I don't have any rules. I mean, everyone's a grown up, so they can do what they want. Um, you know, sometimes the moment takes you away and it just, and that's where you go. Um, now with COVID, I, I mean, I think you have to be really mindful and thoughtful and responsible. And um, most, most people are, are, are doing that. But I think women sometimes are afraid to say, well, wait a minute. Um, you know, that's all great, but I don't know you and, um, and, and, and have a voice with that Just say, I'm not comfortable. So it's okay for, for people to, to say, you know what, I really like you, but I'm not comfortable going in that direction right now. And let's wait the 14 days when, or longer that we know that I'm part of your bubble and you're part of mine. And so. Yeah, there's a lot of mindfulness that really has to happen nowadays. What about when the country went into lockdown? Uh, were your clients still dating at that time? Not a lot. To be yeah, yeah no. When in March, April, not a lot. It, it May started to open up. May, yeah, I would say yeah, beginning of May, people had had enough, and the phone was ringing, and Jill, I want a date, and what's going on, and. So yeah, after about a month and a half, two months. Sue, you run a social group um, here in Ottawa called We Are the Ducklings, and it's not supposed to be a matchmaking group, but I think you've told me that quite a few marriages have resulted out of people meeting in this group. Let's talk a little bit about that. Maybe we can bring some photos up of some of the fun things that you guys do, because you really do some some quirky, fun outings. And the whole idea is, is that the emphasis emphasis on safety as well as fun. Absolutely. So we're all in masks outside. You know, we're having to be, you know, more and more creative after last Friday when the province is shut down even more. But I think it's I would tell people if you put adults together with similar interests, things happen. I was at six duckling weddings last summer, right? Six, you know, and I probably had in the seven years we've been running it, you know, it's been, you know, sort of 60 or 70 matches. It's just, you put people together and for whatever version, and the, the difference between our group and others is it's just, it's just silly. It's, I say it's a group of people trying not to turn into their parents. 
And I think if, if everybody <laughs> wants to have fun and it's being, it's being lighthearted and what happens is you get connections and there's no edits about, you know, we, 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 we don't have, you know, this is just for, you know, sort of specific group around what you're interested in. It's about being open and we do have gay and bisexual couples and we do have polyamorous couples and we do, it's just a bunch of people saying we want to, so we have rules about not being kind, not being aggressive or sexually aggressive and no, no drama. Just let, let's get together and have fun. And you do, you just, you, you say, okay, we want to dress up. We just did, you know, ax throwing outside and we just did a, a we did a, a biker party with a whole bunch of middle-aged people in leather who work for the government and, and we don't have bikes, but we were silly. And it was a big bonfire and you, when you can do that, and some people, it was interesting, some people are in full masks with, we had lays to keep them at a distance. And you could say, no, I don't want to be close to you because I'm more coke, or I have a senior in my life and I'm really worried about my mom and I have to take care of her. So I have to be extra vigilant. It's usually not for themselves, it's for people in their lives they have to be responsible for. So I see that and, and we have different stages. You can have different colored lays to say how close you're okay. You know, I'm I'm at the let's 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 do the, you know, let's do the sort of shoulder hug or stay away. I need you to be twelve feet or farther. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. And you've done some really quirky things in the past, um, Woodstock parties, and even uh, took the group out to a, a, a sex dungeon that's that's uh, run by the <laughs> Dominatrix in Ottawa. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, well, we did the Dominatrix. Well, it's it's the kind of behind the red velvet rope, right? You get to go to, we went to a brothel in town, and, and you never get to go to those things, but you kind of, if you go as a group, it's not so scary. And we yeah. have done, you know, our Halloween parties are epic. I hope we can have one this year. I don't know if that's in the cards, but, you know, we're, we're, we're all in masks anyway. We're, you know, we try to have really fun things. And people sometimes go, oh, you guys are a bit wild. And I'm like, no, we really are, you know, the doctors and the lawyers and the, you know, the bus drivers in the community just wanting to have fun because the idea of dating and i don't know if jill finds this but the the day the guys are like oh yeah we'll do dinner and a movie dinner and movie dinner and movie and you're like ah come on they're gonna yeah. do something else and if you offer new suggestions where people can you know where they can be authentic they can let their guard down and you actually screen for meanness you're left with people of exceptional character jill you have uh, some thoughts on the on the subject dinner and a movie <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, men have been have been raised to sort of uh, lead, and um, times are changing. So again, women have to find their voices. But yeah, especially during COVID, I think men are more apt to just business as usual, and um, women have to remind them that it's not, and it's okay, right? It's 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 okay to say, hey, I'm not comfortable with going to dinner inside a restaurant, but let's, you know, let's go grab a, a, a blanket and sit on the beach somewhere, weather permitted, permitting. Which so, is a little, a little more romantic. romantic. Yeah, it makes it more yeah. romantic. Okay, we, uh, we're just about to go to break, but when we come back, I want to do a deep dive into some of the uh, cool dating ideas that you sent me, Sue, some very interesting alternatives to movie and a dinner. And of course, I want to hear all about this happiness meter that you mentioned uh, earlier when we were chatting, Jill, and maybe delve into a little bit more about the specifics of dating. We'll be right back after the break. Don't go away. Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and on tonight's show, we're talking about navigating the journey of sex relationships and dating during the COVID-19 era with special guests, sex therapist Sue McGarvey and matchmaker from out in Vancouver, Jill Carter. Now, before we went to break, Jill, you were talking a little bit about the importance of having those tough conversations, asking those questions that sometimes women might be afraid to ask. Let's get into that a little bit. Well, I think especially during COVID, um, you you can ask the question of your partner, are you dating anyone? Because I think that's really important. If you've been responsible, you need to you need to ask your partner how many people are you staying. I think that's mm -hmm. more than 
fair. Um, because if they're exposing themselves to multiple partners, you need to know that. Now, people can lie and, and not tell you the truth, but, um, you know, I mean, that's a risk of dating during COVID right now. Um, also, and Sue and I were talking about this, you know, when it does get intimate, you know, what what precautions are you going to take? I know Dr. Tam was talking about wearing masks during, during sex. I think if you, you, you I don't agree with that. But um, yeah. with all due respect, but um, uh, I think if you wait the necessary time, I mean, you can both get tested for COVID too if it's if it's getting serious, and and just concentrate on 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 your relationship. I think I think not a lot has to change if you take the necessary precautions. And yeah. so, like, so you, have have ask, you have to ask your partner. Sorry, Sue, so many women in relationships are afraid to ask those questions. They're afraid to have that conversation, for instance, negotiating condom use, as you brought up when we were chatting earlier. Um, what are some of those tough conversations that are now people are people are now forced to have them because COVID-19 has given them sort of this renewed sense of urgency. Because I think, you know, no one really thinks about HIV anymore and the STDs, you know, it just doesn't have that sense of immediacy that it might have had 10 or 20 years ago. Do you think COVID-19 has kind of given people a bit more courage to have those conversations? I think people are, I, I think people are, I, as, as Jill had said, they're taking a deep breath. They're saying, okay, what do I want? I want a real relationship. I want to not be lonely. I want to fill this hole. I want to touch. I want to get laid. Whatever it is that they're doing. And COVID has just amplified everything. So if you're in a relationship that you think is mediocre and you think you can wear, you know, weather it out through cuffing season, um, you know, through the winter months, it's been clear that you can't because you're stuck inside in four walls and you're going crazy and you realize this is not the person you want to do this with. And, you know, when you're talking about happiness and talking about what, you know, that this, this is, you know, that life, it becomes more clear that life is short and, yeah. you know, this is it. We got one shot at it and we want to be the best versions of ourselves. And I think COVID being able to say to somebody, I had to take a deep breath. We're all making it up, but I'm going to ask you, you know, what's going on for you and, and, and be able to say, look, I'm prepared to take a risk with you. Um, can you take a risk with me? And here's what I need to know. And if we do this, if we're going to get naked together, or we're going to, I'm going to have you over, or I'm going to introduce you to my friends and my family. I need you to be respectful and not be fast and loose. I, you know, if, if you're saying that, you know, that I'm seeing a whole bunch of girls and you're, you're the Wednesday girl, tell me, tell me that yeah. because it's important. And I think people are, are less able to waste time right now. They're saying, I'm not able to, to go and have, go to a party tomorrow night and meet five more guys. I'm not able to do that. I need to know if you've got, you know, eight and a half of the characteristics out of 10 that I'm looking for in a partner. I find you attractive. And let's let's spend some time digging deep here because as Jill would probably attest, there's a, you know, you can love a lot of people, but can you live with them? You can go to your grave loving somebody, but can you live with them? And that's and a I great segue. Want to to love a lot of people. I think this is what COVID has shone the light on, right? Is the the importance of being connected to one special person and and feeling that need and that loneliness. So I, I think that's another opportunity that that's happened for society. And I think there's a lot of there's a lot less loose and loosey goosey sex happening because of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue, I wanted to ask you as sort of a segue to what you were bringing up before in terms of people living together. Um, what about couples, people who are already coupled up and have been living in isolation and they're, you know, maybe they're on the verge of breaking up because normally they're not around each other 24 seven. Normally they have other interests and girls night out or boys night out. And all of a sudden they're spending all this extra time with each other and really getting on each other's nerves. Are you seeing a lot of couples like that? And what's your advice to them? to kind of get through this patch. Yep, you know, and, and I think there's a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of, 
you know, like just like the, the, the March where we all ate bread, banana bread and we had the pandemic 15. I think there's going to be the 2021 divorces. I think the divorce attorneys are going to be busy. I think there's a lot of people who've said, I can't do it anymore. I'm going to run screaming into the night. That's it. I have I have gone as far as and the, and the truth is that for a lot of relationships, they do run their course and it's OK. Like to, it's to be okay to try. I think it's worse to try and make it work, make it work. And it's, it's been, it's been, you know, put a fork in it. It's been done for a while. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people who are not going to make it and to be able to not drag it out for five more years. Let's call this. But if you really mm. are struggling again, it's about love and patience and grace and gratitude that we live in the best country in the world and that we have the most amazing resources and we are going to get through this together find your people you know you're allowed a bubble of 10 find them if you're not you know like like that was the thing that got me through was was to have a group of friends where we all agreed we're going to pinky promise we are not going to do this we're going to use hand sanitizer and masks at the grocery store and we are going to support each other and we were a community, which is the, again, the 1950s games night and, you know, sort of progressive dinners at different houses because we were all in the same bubble. We saw a lot of our friends and that, honestly, because it takes a village. And if you don't have the support, you are in real trouble right now. Do you think that if you can do this COVID-19 thing well, that you would end up happier and in better relationships? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you can, can, this is, this is the authentic stuff. If you, this is chewy, this is gritty. This is who I really am. Like you're going to see me at my absolute worst. And if you still love me, cause I am crazy wandering around. I'm, I'm a complete extrovert. And so, you know, they said, don't, don't worry about your introverts that time. They're fine. It's the extroverts who are going mental. And boy, did I feel that. And to say, to not say, I still like you. I still want to be with you and I'm going to hold your hand and we are going to get through this. And this is, as Jill mentioned, it's a little tiny piece of your life. It's not always going to feel like this. And I remind people, it's not always going to feel like this and that relationships ebb and flow. And in some days it's rough. And there are a lot of therapists. I still, you know, I'm still seeing clients every day in Ottawa. Um, I'm an essential service. So I have, you know, this special space where there's, you know, more than six feet away and I have a separate entrance and it's all washed down or they can see me by zoom. But that is a guy. I'm like, if you're stuck, fix this because yeah. life is short. Jill, you have well, an interesting concept. I was just wanted to touch on what Sue was saying. I think if a marriage does or a relationship does end, um, because, because it's true that, you know, when you're stuck inside with each other, do you really like each other that much? But it doesn't mean that the relationship was a failure, right? I mean, if you, if you, if you raise kids together, it's not a failure, it's a success. So it's how you, how you perceive the relationship and Sue's right. You know, sometimes relationships run their course and people change, you know, and, mm -hmm. and people evolve at different times during their relationship at different speeds. So it's it doesn't mean that it was a failure. You weren't a failure as a wife or a, as a husband or as a parent, but that, you know, there was success in the relationship as well. So I think that's a really important um, factor that people should understand. That's a really good point, Jill. And you also have a very interesting concept called the happiness meter. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I think this really, the, the COVID really shone the light on it. And we've all gone through, I, I know some people, you know, go through therapy and you go through different um, online courses that can help teach this, but it's really just taking stock of where you're at in the here and now. So whether it's, you know, your, your physical wellness, your mental wellness, your financial wellness, your spiritual wellness, your emotional wellness. And just from a, from a rating scale of one to 10, where, when you think of your body temple, for instance, are you happy with it and where, where that falls? And then using those feelings as a barometer to see where, where you're at and whether what you need to do it gives, it gives you a starting point of of where you need to start and uh, progress to evolve and to 
to make yourself happier. I mean, and, and it does change. My son reminded me that the happiness, happiness meter does change on a daily basis, mom. You're not always going to be happy, but she is right. True. But, yeah. but, it's, um, but it's a good starting point for people. True. We just have two minutes left before the end of our time together. And at this time during the show, I'd like to ask our guests if they have any parting thoughts for our viewers and where we can find them. Um, Sue, did you have any other comments for our audience tonight? Well, I think I think don't do this alone, right? I don't know anybody personally that has died from COVID-19, but I do, you know, I'm a part of a group of Ottawa therapists and I know that we've lost clients for loneliness, right? In the UK, they have a ministry of loneliness. This is this is the time to reach out. And if you're stuck, come join my social group, come see me individually, send me an email. I can hook you up with at least somebody in terms of resources. Do not weather this by yourself got this one amazing beautiful. community in this amazing city and that's we are the ducklings.com we are the ducklings.com find me at sexwithsue.com i have a sexcounseling.ca site you know if you're just looking for specifics um let's talk about it i love that and jill any parting thoughts for our viewers and where can we find you well i think if you are in a relationship and you want to know where it's going to go um, ask the ask the questions. Ask the hard questions. Don't be afraid to to have a voice because if after nine months, for instance, um, and your your partner isn't willing to give you an idea of where where they're at, it's a pretty good indicator of where it's not going to go. So I encourage. And really, quickly, really quickly, Jill, uh, we can find you online, and you're still taking clients. I am at uh, modernpursuitmatchmaking.com. I love that. Thank you so much to you both for taking the time to chat with us and sharing your wisdom and insight. It is such a difficult time for all of us, but as you said so eloquently, Jill, this too shall pass. And as you pointed out quite rightfully, Sue, um, there is a silver lining to this. And if, if we know how to do the COVID-19 thing right, we can actually come out stronger and perhaps with better and healthier relationships than we did before this whole pandemic started. So thank you very much to you both for joining us today. Right. Thank you, Barbara. Take care, Joe. And to those of you who have been watching tonight, thank you so much for taking the time during your evening to join us. We'll see you back in the studio next week. Thank you again and have a great night. Bye.